So this is my presentation on Jurassic Park, which is 65 million years in the making. Um, so, introduction. Hello, is anyone there? Oh, oh. hi Emilio, I see that. I see Kelly. Ah, Emilio, if you explain to our friends what we're doing here today, that's a um, presentation and all. The important presentation. Just say, have Emilio. Ah, uh, good, you are. So, as they probably are already, we're doing a presentation on Jurassic Park. Yeah. And seeing as it's on Jurassic Park, can you just place your finger right here, please? Yeah, no problem. Ah, perfect. Oh, I'm just going to take a tiny drop of your. Uh, Good. <laughs> ah, and and sorry for that hurt. I mean, it is just a Parkinson's, so I'll need your DNA to carry on the presentation. A DNA strain like me is a blueprint for building a living thing. And sometimes animals that went extinct millions of years ago, like dinosaurs, left their blueprints behind for us to find. We just had to know where to look. A hundred million years ago, there were mosquitoes, just like today. And, just like today, they fed on the blood of animals, even dinosaurs. Sometimes, after biting the dinosaur, the mosquito would land on the branch of a tree and get stuck in the sap. But after a long time, the tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. This fossilized tree sap, which we call amber, we for millions of years. With the mosquito inside, until Jurassic Park scientists came along. Using sophisticated techniques, they extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and, bingo, dino DNA. A full DNA strain contains three billion genetic codes. If we look at screens like these once a second for eight hours a day, it takes two years to look at the entire DNA strain. It's that long. Now that's where our geneticists take over. Thinking machine supercomputers and gene sequencers break down the strand in minutes. And virtual reality displays show our geneticists the gaps in the DNA sequence. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. And now we can make a baby dinosaur. So, next thing we're going to be talking about in the presentation, I think, is an unusual topic or fact about this film, Jesse Park. I'll hand this over to you, Emilio. So, so, an unusual fact about the film to be presented by Emilio. Ah, thank you for that, Emilio. Now, I'm going to be telling you an unusual fact about the film. Did you know that these lines were out of the job? Or extinct. We're actually in incorporated from what Steven Spielberg said to the editor after they found out what they could do with CGI. That is computer generated imagery. Because as we all know, Jurassic Park is amazing for CGI and also animatronics. But the animatronics by themselves weren't very good. So they had to boost it with adding CGI to go with it. And they'd never heard of the CGI before, and the, the editor invented it on the spec. And whilst they were doing that, it replaced stop motion, which they were going to fade it over the top. And here came CGI, computer generated imagery. So, three things that are great about the film, personally to me. Uh, I thought CGI because it was just groundbreaking. I mean, the CGI holds up today after um, like years of it being around. But yeah, the technology they had in the film doesn't. And uh, Steven Spielberg directed it. I love Steven Spielberg's like, tone to films. It's very atmospheric. He has a unique style and shots and composition in which we're going to get into after. Uh, and the cast was just amazing, phenomenal. Um, the, Sam Neill, uh, Laura Dern, Richard Affenbrain, Jeff Goldblum, they all like suit the roles perfectly. Although it would have been better about Jeff Goldblum. I mean, half the time in the film, he sat there over his shirt open. So, the storyline, yeah. So, it's set around the theme park, which is uh, curated by John Hammond, who's played by Richard Affenbrain. Um, basically, the theme park has biologically engineered theme park monsters, quote from the third film, uh, which are actually dinosaurs. Uh, they're unleashed by the bad IT employee who needs some financial gain, and so he sells the dinosaur DNA to make that money back. And 
basically then from then all the dinosaurs escape, all goes to havoc, and it's left for the people that uh, haven't got into Exile in the Park to survive at Leeds Island. So the practical effects. So animatronics were used to make the T-Rex, especially they made the life-size T-Rex. Uh, that's a guess on what they thought the skin and muscle tone would be like, because obviously we can't tell for sure. We weren't alive then. Um, <coughs> they make that with CGI over the top, which fade in and over it. Great, uh, groundbreaking visual effects. So what was bad? Say noise, right? Say noise, right? John yeah. Hammond's best season spirit, no expense. And yet he has a single IT employee who tries to sell diamond. And in the process gets himself and everyone else to get the gift. A gift. Jeff Goldblum. See that dino running? I don't, because it disappears. Q-Tech Space Man's whole Q-Tech's all safety space. High security park shuts down when it rains. Predated diamonds don't have feathers. And so that was everything I thought was bad about it, but there's a lot of more things, but I'm not really going into detail because I don't have much time. So, Jessic Pack sing along! No, 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 apparently you said you'll sing along. This is a song, it's a theme she for a film. It's my favourite film, probably. It's between this and Alien 3. Dinosaurs are in the film. It's the film about dinosaurs. It's called Jurassic Park, even more. Most of the dinosaurs are interactive from the fetish period, but it doesn't got them here. There's a few inaccuracies speaking in the interlogic clean. Beaver's eyes are in the film, no one really knows all that much about. Edmontosaurus, like a baggy of purple soul. Big one and his dawn, she was having a cop's baggy mind, it's never so long. Broke a cop, it's made first, then a little one's from the lost world. The ones that ate that guy in the room, because he came to the herd. The lost the raptors are one of them was famous. Cause they're really intelligent, and they hung with the neighbours, and it's scary dangerous. But since Jurassic Park was made, apparently decided that it wasn't really clever. And instead of getting rather, they were covered in feathers like a bird. Tyrannosaurus is my favourite dinosaur. He win in a fight with anyone, he is the best of them all. Except in Burton, was a bad dinosaur. The one who kills the T-Rex in the forest looks like he's not going to have a nice job. So we move in. I can't wait for this platform. I just hope Jeff Goldblum's in it. I'm rich in that in brown. I'm Tom Neal. And I'm a woman who played Dr. Sadler in the first film. I can't remember the name. Okay. Okay. So I'm just saying, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Kind of Saurus gets beaten by a king of I noticed this sort of themes, you know, by the type of this film, I mean, um, using the rule of thirds and leading lines in this one. So, uh, up here he has a T Rex, here's a cow with the chasing. He sort of always has the um, heroes or protagonists of the story or that particular scene to the right of the shot. And the T Rex to the upper left, or whichever the body is. And then he has leading lines coming down the car here, all the way up to the T Rex to lead to its mouth. Uh, another example of the uh, goody body situation is the Raptors, uh, the horse Raptors on the left here, rather than the right. And the next uh, example actually uh, gives details to why that happened. So you see here, uh, it's Dr. Arnold Brown around in a close up, and uh, basically, He's towards the right of the uh, rule of thirds, 
uh, just because I think uh, Spielberg always tends to have uh, the main source of light in coming from the uh, above the right. So it sort of like illuminates the good people more than the bad people in the shots. And then in this last example, you see that uh, the T Rex in uh, Wayne Dinosaur's World of Earth uh, scene. And basically, uh, you see the lights illuminating the whole T Rex. So basically, it shows that the T Rex is the savior at this point. It saved them from the Velociraptors who were shredded to pieces. And the franchise, so Jurassic Park uh, was made in 1994. It's such a phenomenal franchise, it's leading on to two films, which weren't as good as the first, but anyway. Um, the set, uh, Universal actually wanted to fund for um, uh, Schindler's List at first, and more, toward, more than Jurassic Park, because they thought that was going to be a bigger hit than Jurassic Park was. But then it, Jurassic Park got almost uh, three times the amount of money in box office from Schindler's um, like uh, customers going to see it rather than Schindler's listed. And um, so they funded two more films for this part. Spielberg directed the second, they're also known as The Lost World, which was made in 1999. And he didn't feel like he had the same touch onto the film as the first one. So then he gave the rights to um, the boot man from the second one and the first, which was John Johnston, Joe Johnston, who was really keen about this fact. He's telling Stephen that he should have all these ideas. He was originally wanting to make a second, but Spielberg didn't like him. He wanted to do it himself. But then in third one, he's like, right, you can do this because you needed a fresh mind to freshen up the franchise. And uh, but Spielberg still kept on producing it. But now AMC have actually bought the rights to the film along with Fox. And a new installment of Jurassic Park is on the way in cinemas in June 12, 2015 at approximately 3 p.m. America time. <laughs> Um, this uh, will be directed by Colin Chavarro, who's uh, not, he's quite new in director, he's not done that much great stuff before. It will be set in the current day, and it's basically the in-gen new company inside the film that like, made the part successful again, and it's actually up and running this time, and then it's gonna, something's going to go bad. And this is the original trailer for Jurassic Park. Since the beginning of time, man has searched the earth for evidence of its past. But while some have looked for clues to the mystery, one man has found the way to bring the mystery back into life. I am a lamb of the ghost of us, and the second last five years have never been the biological preserve of this timeline. Science has defined evolution. Genetics has massive creations. We have made living biological attractions so astounding that they capture the imagination of the entire planet and extinction. Is a thing of the past. But as to Jurassic Park. Of these attractions are ready, and of course, that the park will open with the basic tour you're about to take. Yeah, not the best. This is not the best. Dinosaurs are now two species separated by 65 million years of evolution. It's all suddenly thrown back into the mix together. Yeah. Oh. We have the slightest idea. If you're
Let's figure it out over the doors. That was released in 1994. No, it was made, I'll show you my TV. That was the year it was made, but it was released into cinema. No, it was released. Yeah, I'm saying it was released in 1993. It's on IMDb. Okay. Come on. I'll, I'll show you later, but my yeah. second thing is I think you should have left the sing along to the end because after you did it, that was all anyone could think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was good. Very critical to sing along, I think. Or else we think of doing that. Um, I like the way that you tracked it yourself. That was interesting. It was a good way to do it. It's actually a different way that anybody else would do. So, well done on that. And you know your stuff by it. So, yeah, well done. Holly. Um, when you're, you could, like, oh, I don't know how to phrase it right. At the beginning of the clips, you could be you talking to yourself. It's a little bit distracting. Yeah. A bit touch cringy. Uh, well, it might be mentally uh, insane. Like, I think no, I think it's because people. I think because people find struggle to say their own name more than I do. Yeah, it's like it's weird how you're talking about yourself in third yeah. person. Really get that. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Oh. I, I actually like that. It was because it was in the movie. Do you remember Jurassic Park? Because in Jurassic Park, the curator guy has this big video and he talks to the video. That that was him reenacting that scene. I actually thought that was really quite clever. Yeah. Augmented reality. Anybody else? Jones? Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. I was just going to say how um, I liked that you did that at the beginning, like linking it to the film and what he does. Yeah. And the DNA clip, that's my favourite film. <laughs> yeah. I love how you've made it like interactive and multi dimensional. Nice. I realised I missed the like slide at the end. Stefan Spielberg. It's fine. Uh, Michael, you had a. So it's just about when you're in the video. It says if Jack Sorrow's Rex can't be beaten by anything, but um, King Kong kills two of them in King Kong. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, <laughs> um, you were you were you were chirping about something at the start. No, it's just it says you said that it's Stefan Spielberg. It said Stefan. So was, was it a spelling error? Yeah. But that's is it the age of me, Stephen Spielberg? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah it's, it's not real big, it's just a spelling error. Yeah, yeah. Spelling error. S T E V E N. Yeah. 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 It's just a spelling mistake, it's not a good presentation. I misspelled it. Cool. Okay, wicked. Thanks, Emilio. That was 18 minutes. There was a moment where I was there.